and challenging the audience to achieve a higher level of beliefs or achievement. And the second major objective is appeal to audiences' needs and emotions using stories, anecdotes, and quotes to add drama. Avoid using notes. And time allotted is 8 to 10 minutes. All the way soon. Please join your hands to welcome Toastmaster Sukhu. Take the title, Toastmaster Supo. Toastmaster Supo, take the title. Thanks sir, for inviting me on Toastmaster Naveen. Previously, one day Toastmaster Naveen was telling me that your speeches motivate us, your speeches inspire us and I come to the meetings whenever you talk for one reason that your speeches motivate or inspire me. Little did Toastmaster Naveen at that point of time know that all those motivational speeches, all those inspiring speeches were nothing more than a clock for a devil that resides deep inside me. Yes, fellow Toastmasters and guests, I am here to talk about that one devil which made my life hell by showing me some fruits the, to begin with. It was in 2001, I was not even 17 at that time, when I was doing a plus two, that I and my friend in Vijaywada went to a cyber cafe to do some casual browsing. My friend said, Subbu, I am going to show you some very cool stuff. Now that cool stuff falls under this SRP category of Toastmasters. It had the names of heroines on it and I need not describe the rest of it. Few days later, I came to know that it's called for. What started as a casual browsing in 2001, my dear friends, became a habit, then became an interest, then became an obsession, and finally metamorphosed into an addiction. By 2005, by the time I completed my BTEC, I started realizing that I was an addict. But then from between 2001 and 2005, I stayed with my parents. So most of the time, I had limited access to internet. So I had to go out to browse, which essentially cut down some amount of that habit. But in 2005, I migrated to Hyderabad in the search of my first job and, when, and I joined my roomies and now all of them enjoy the same. This addiction or this obsession now started becoming a chronic addiction. A chronic addiction is something like you start look, that activity around 8 o'clock in the night and then wake up your friends at the next day morning 8 o'clock and then you go to sleep, wasting one full night. From 2005 to 2008, there was only an upward increase in the graph. It was in 2008 that my conscience started tricking me. It started telling me, it's only three years in your IT career now, what have you achieved? When I look back, there was no achievement. While some of my friends' careers were soaring, I was becoming a laggard. I was making little progress. Now I started realizing that whatever I was doing was bad and I had to come out of it. But I was not able to come out of it. Interesting, isn't it? An inner voice keeps telling you whatever you are doing is bad and a subconscious mind which always takes you towards it. The struggle literally tore my life apart. To an extent where I was always between this conscious and unconscious mind fight. Subconsciously, I'll do something and consciously, I'll repent it. Somewhere in 2009, I started having bouts of depression. That's because on one end, I was not achieving much in my career or my professional life and two, I was not able to leave the source from where this entire problem was stemming up. This, my dear friends, made my life practically a hell. I was trying to control it. The more I could control it, it was like holding a fistful of sand and holding it tight. The first contact of faith, the sand will fall off, isn't it? 
The same thing used to happen. At times I used to feel like I am trying to control a serpent, a snake, by putting my leg on its head. The moment I release my leg, the serpent is going to bite me. If I keep my leg like that, my leg is going to get straight. This was the trouble I was facing. God is great. Luckily, I started, it happened so that I started listening some, accidentally I started listening some spiritual discourses where I heard one wonderful story. How many of you in this room have seen turtles? Tortoise. How many of you have seen it? Okay. This, this, the tortoise is a very interesting creature. Okay. You go near it, it will slowly pull its legs, all four legs and its head into that shell. Right? Now you take how much big ever a stick you get, take it and start hitting it on its shell, nothing will happen to the tortoise. Nothing. Now don't try it, okay? Uh, I also support PETA. Okay, so don't do that. But still, if you, how much hard you hit it, nothing will happen to the tortoise. Our mind is also like When I was in this sort of depression, I used to read, you know, motivational stuff. I used to read, you know, how to de-edict from this. There are a lot of on on online help also available for this particular topic. I used to read it. It used to work for one day, but the next day it used to be the same. See, the, what happens to the tortoise is, after, after it realizes that you have left right, it will again put its legs and head out, it will see whether you are there and around or not, and it will walk off. The same used to happen with my mind also. Now if I have to tame this tortoise, what I have to do? I have to go gently near it, catch it, turn it upside down, and then even a needle is enough to kill the tortoise. Yes or no? The moment you turn the tortoise upside down, don't do that again, okay? But <laughs> even a needle, it's enough to kill the tortoise. This is what that great person in that speech told. And I started implementing this technique. My dear friends, you see a lot of addicts around you. Some of them might be addicted to drinks, some of them might be addicted to cigarettes, some of them might be addicted to something, you know, like even a small game like what is that? <coughs> they might be addicted, that's it. And they won't just come out of it. How much ever they try to control it, they won't be able to control it. But when, but there will be some consciousness even in them, which will be telling them, you know, that what you are doing is wrong. The whole <coughs> exercise is about putting up that, or uh, enervating your positive thought, which is trying to tell, which is consciously trying to tell your subconscious mind that whatever you are doing is wrong. That's the more important. How do I get my positive thoughts? How did I do that? I used to, I, I started realizing that, okay, there is one guilt consciousness in me, which is telling me that, okay, so boo, this is wrong. I have to increase this positive thought. How do you used to do? I used to reflection. Whenever this sort of a negative thought used to come to me, I used to diversify my thoughts. I used to indulge in some other activity and try to forget this. That was one way of doing it. And let me confess. All my motivational speeches which I give in this Toastmasters are also as a part of that exercise only. Whenever I come and deliver a motivational speech and you all applaud, I feel that one, my positive thought is increasing. And my negative thought is slightly getting depressed. And which I want. The devil is still inside me, my dear friends. The devil has not left me as yet. It's still inside me. But today I am in a position where I can tell I am controlling it to a large extent. Because the devil always will be there. Once you are an addict, the devil will always be there inside you. It's all about taming the turtle. Now, how do you tame this turtle? First thing is the positive thought, as I told you. For me, it's delivering speeches, it's reading fiction, etc. For you, it might be something else. For example, Ravi's positive, uh, positive energy source might be something else. Ramya's positive energy source might be something else. And Digvijay's positive energy source might be something else. Might be something else. Identify that. And, keep, and, and always keep that positive source of energy near you. And keep engaging in that sort of activity regularly. Discipline your mind to do that regularly. Two, seek professional help. My journey started in 2001. I became an addict in 2005. In 2008 I started realizing and the fight started. And after three years in 2011, I came out of it. But had I taken professional help, I would have come much quickly <coughs> out of the situation. Yes or no? So seek professional help. Last but not the least, from my own experience, what I realize is, the moment a person becomes an addict, his societal contacts will come down. There will be a competence that will be coming inside him, 
and he'll stop mingling with the society. <coughs> if one of your friends is skipping all your meetings regularly, go to him, talk to him, try to make him more socialized. That is the best way of how you can help a person who is an addict. Friends, as Rocky Balboa says, it's not, it's not how hard you get hit. It's how you stand up after you are the hardest hit. It took me 10 years to come out of an addiction. Probably it might take suffer someone, it might be just 10 days or 10 months or even 10 minutes. If this CC 10, 10 minutes will help you cut down that by 10 times, I am more happy. Over to you.